A group of senators is speaking out on behalf of Navy SEALs who are being threatened with punishment by their own government. I'm Stuart Shepard, and this is First Liberty Live. Obviously, we are on the road again in Washington, D.C. Thank you for liking and sharing our videos. You are an important part of this project, and we appreciate you for doing that. They are in peak physical condition, highly trained and highly capable. As a group, they are among the most elite fighting forces on the face of the planet, as well as in the air and under the water. First Liberty Institute is representing dozens of Navy SEALs who are being threatened with punishment. Why? Because they requested a legal religious accommodation in regards to the Department of Defense's vaccine mandate. Their plight has caught the eye of a group of senators here in Washington who are speaking out on their behalf. It was sponsored by, put together by Senator Roger Marshall of Kansas. We want to say thanks to him for that. We were invited as guests since we're representing the Navy SEALs. He continues to proudly serve our nation as a member of the Marine Corps Reserve and is now a lieutenant colonel. And today he's working feverishly to defend dozens, actually 40, active duty SEALs and reservists seeking a religious exemption to the COVID vaccine. Mike, let me turn it over to you and uh, tell a little bit about your story and the folks that you represent. Thank you, Senator. Um, as a veteran, uh, I can say that when you raise your right hand and you swear the oath to support and defend the Constitution and you join the United States military, you certainly give up some of your freedoms, and we all recognize that, but you do not give up your religious freedom when you serve this country. And yet that is exactly what First Liberty Institute's clients are facing today, is the loss of their religious freedom, being forced to choose between their faith and serving this country. And our clients, these 40 U.S. Navy SEALs collectively have more than 350 years of military service, more than 100 combat deployments. That's the type of experience and leadership and combat experience that's irreplaceable and incalculable. And yet, they face the loss of their careers, they face being involuntary separ involuntarily separated, their families have been punished by being told that they're not allowed to travel, even spouses and children are not allowed to travel simply because they have a sincere religious objection to the vaccine. Uh, they face the loss of special pay due to their, their special operations status. Uh, and the Navy has now threatened these SEALs with recoupment of the training money spent training them to become Navy SEALs and giving them the, the specialized training that they have to do what they do. And speaking of doing what Navy SEALs do, uh, this is a time in our nation's history when we face very real threats. Threats from, from China and North Korea, Iran, Russia, and we should expect that every one of our able-bodied Navy SEALs and other service members, we want them defending this nation, fighting for our freedom. And instead, they're fighting for their livelihoods and their careers. That's un-American and that's wrong. So First Liberty Institute, it, it really is one of our greatest honors to represent these warriors, these Navy SEALs. And all we're asking is that the Department of Defense honor the Constitution and the rule of law, honor its own regulations, and allow these Navy SEALs to continue to serve with a religious accommodation to avoid having to take this vaccine that violates their conscience and their sincerely held religious beliefs. Think about the consequences of a dishonorable discharge. My dad started off his military career as a military policeman. He then became a police officer in my hometown, rose through the ranks, became chief of police for 25 years. My dad told me as a young, young lad, he would never hire a person with a dishonorable discharge from the military. And so many of those military folks follow the same career path that my father did. They make the people that serve in the military make great police officers. But there's also some other issues, what a dishonorable discharge would mean as well. You would lose your access to GI Bill uh, for more education. You would lose access to VA home loans, your VA medical benefits, military funeral honors. I just can't tell you, every, every week, every month, we get requests to make sure that someone gets proper military funeral honors, how important that is to Americans. They cannot re-enlist in another branch. They will lose ownership of firearms or ammunitions. And in some states, they can lose their voting rights. 
This is a big issue. It is a big deal. Uh, it's going to make our nation less secure. Probably over 50% of our enlisted soldiers in the National Guard, the Army Reserve, have not had the vaccine yet. So many, probably another, you know, thousands of other people that are active duty have not had the vaccine yet. And these are, these are based upon religious convictions. Yesterday, I sat down with an active duty Navy SEAL officer and said, tell me why you don't want the vaccination. And he went through a very deep spiritual context of, of his faith-based decision, prayer and thought. And that was his conclusion. And I'm not saying that I would follow his logic perfectly, but I respect his faith and his ability to make that decision. And just like one size doesn't fit all, for when a doctor sees a patient or treating a, pa a patient, I think the same applies to your religious freedoms as well. So the news conference just finished up. I've got Mike Berry here with me. Mike, what'd you think? Well, it was the first time I've done a press conference with uh, five or six senators, so that was definitely a new experience for me. But it was uh, just really thrilling to be able to be with uh, a group of senators who have shown such strong, steadfast support for religious liberty in the military and continue to do so. Uh, their support for First Liberty, our defense of these Navy SEALs, is uh, really something that is uh, f that I'll remember for the rest of my life because this is this case means a lot to me personally. Um, you know, as lawyers, we often try to remove ourselves emotionally from the case, but uh, when you're representing your brothers and sisters who serve in the military uh, and you know what they're up against, uh, it, it easy, it's easy for it to become a very personal thing. And so when you see members of Congress uh, stepping forward and saying, we want to stand alongside you, we want to come alongside First Liberty Institute and defend religious liberty in the military, uh, it really continues to give me hope for the future of our nation and the future of religious liberty. Yeah, and, and they also have served in the military. A couple of them, I heard one that was in the Army, one that was in the Air Force. What's the significance of that connection? Well, I mean, I, the first thing I thought of is that if you look at the, the statistics, the percentage of uh, members of Congress who have military service continues to decline each year. So the fact that we still have some who do have military backgrounds or who are veterans I think is important because it, it, it really does show that they understand what it means to be a public servant. They understand what it means to serve uh, in this nation's military and some of the sacrifices that we give up, right? But, but they all understood, just as we do at First Liberty Institute, that although we give up some of our freedoms when we serve in the military, we don't give up religious freedom. And I think that was the powerful message that we all sent in unison this morning. And we do want to invite people. We've got a letter of support for the Navy SEALs on our website. You can go to firstliberty.org. You can sign the letter of support. We also have a spot where you can add your own personal note of encouragement. So when you go to firstliberty.org, there's a pop-up that will show up on the home page. Just click on that. It'll take you through. And that's it for this week. We'll see you next week right here on First Liberty Live.